When I was about four years old, my dad started me shooting. We'd go to the dump, take a 22 rifle, and rats would come out, and I'd shoot them. Major Jim Land. You know, I, I think iconic's one of those words that gets used far too regularly lately. But in his case, he is iconic. He's a fair man. He's an honest man. When he tells you something, you better listen because he's got a reason why he doesn't talk a lot, but when he tells you something, there's a reason why he's telling you. Jim Land had a very long, distinguished career at NRA. He ran our field operations division, he ran the membership division, and his most notable role was as NRA secretary. He's a guy whose life was dedicated to service, uh, at first our country in the Marine Corps, and then the National Rifle Association. And his, his path to NRA uh, came originally from target shooting. Shooting has always been a part of my life. I started competitively in Hawaii. The regimental commander had me scheduled to go to jungle warfare school in Panama. I was about three weeks from going to that and I was very excited about it because I wanted to go to the recon company. And I needed that under my belt. And about 10 days before I was to leave to go to Panama, the battalion commander called me to his office and said I wasn't going. He would had my orders canceled and that I was going to Puloa for the division matches. That just destroyed me. I didn't even know what the division matches were at that time. Uh, but I was the high rifle shooter in the battalion and I was second high pistol shooter in the battalion. So he figured that that's where I belong. Dad taught me the basics, okay? Side alignment and trigger control. Everything else aids that. I think he, he said that to me while I was in my crib as an infant. The first year I went to Camp Perry and, and shot the Marine Corps matches, I didn't have any idea what I was doing. I kept trying to do something f functional, but it turned out that it was psychological. You had to develop your full concentration on the front sights, and uh, you programmed your trigger to let that take care of itself. In the long-range shooting community, especially the military long-range and sniping community, Major Land is a legend. Um, you know, the first guy basically stood up the whole Marine Corps uh, sniper program and I'm an old army guy, but I gotta admit the Marines probably do it better than anybody else. The snipers in the Marine Corps, there wasn't such a thing. The battalions in Hawaii had the M1C rifles, but they were never used and they were in terrible shape. And when we started uh, running a sniper program over there, it was a, a real education for some people. The, the, the way it happened is that I ran into a uh, army shooter that had gone through the Canadian sniper school. We were looking for something because you can only give the commanding general so many pop metal trophies before he starts asking, well, what are you doing for the Marine Corps, so to speak? We decided that we were going to start a sniper school. And the warrant officer said, well, that's not gonna work because we don't have an MOS, we don't have a, uh, the equipment and, and so on. Said, well, let's call it a scout sniper program 
the commanding officers for the regiments are always looking for training for their scout. So we'll call it a scout sniper program. And then when we get them over here, we'll teach them what we want to teach them. And that's essentially how, how we started. Want to know what's happening at American Rifleman? Follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. We'll be right back. Really, it's the integrity that he has to put everything aside and look at the facts and make a judgment as the NRA secretary or the, the president of the Marine Corps Distinguished Association or whatever Quantico Club he has always been uh, a straight shooter. This then general came out to inspect the ordnance shop. And I was the commanding officer, and when he walked in and he saw me, his first, what the hell are you doing here? Why aren't you down south killing BC? And uh, I said, sir, I go where the Marine Corps sends me to. And 10 days later, I was on a plane uh, to go to the 1st Marine Division in Vietnam. Next morning, I went in to see the general. I walked in. He said, I want snipers in this division, and I want them killing VC. I had some of the best marksmanship instructors in the Marine Corps uh, that were distinguished. Uh, marksman and and so on had shot on the Marine Corps rifle team with me and and that sort of thing and I started bringing them in that's when I uh, got Carlos Hathcock came in and I started setting up the plan I had this philosophy that you can't teach unless you've been there. So for the first six weeks, there were 17 of us that were instructors, including myself. And we were the division snipers. So we physically did everything that we were going to teach being a sniper, there are two, two factors. One is your ability to get there and get into position. And the second one is your ability at marksmanship. You gotta know both of them. If you don't know both of them, you're in trouble. Cotton on the right target. Roger. On target. Impact. I'm Christopher Olson with American Riflemen. We're in the heartland of Virginia at Black Bear Shooting Complex, honoring a shooting sports legend, Major Jim Land, at the inaugural Major Jim Land Snipers Cup. We're going to be shooting 18 stages over the course of two days. There are mountains here with shots from 10 yards all the way out to 2,000 yards. This is a unique facility that allows us to shoot up and down angles in the East Coast, which is something that's not really done. Uh, a lot of these shooters are not used to shooting the terrain that we have here, and it's gonna allow us to get a really interesting course of fire for the shooters over the next two days. In the long range shooting community, especially the military long range and sniping community, Major Land is a legend. When I was asked to produce something for him for this match, we knew we wanted a precision rifle event that was challenging to the shooters, but that if they executed good fundamentals with the rifles, they would have a very enjoyable weekend. And I think we succeeded with that. It was kind of a gut wrencher for me because the facility up there, the range, is very similar to the 
area that we worked on the Ho Chi Minh Trail, along the Ho Chi Minh Trail. It was like being back in Vietnam, to be very truthful about it. This event has really uh, challenged our angle shooting. You know, uh, we have, we're, we're from Louisiana, we're based out of Arkansas, and uh, we don't get a whole lot of mountains. So being able to use uh, cosine indicators and shoot at long range with angular deviation has been a challenge for sure. Cotton, middle target. On target. You ready? I'm ready. Impact! The wind too, for me. Uh, it's a bunch of really dynamic wind conditions out here. We're having updraft, downdraft. Uh, we even had an ELR shooter tell us about some different thermal barriers, you know, shooting down into these valleys that we haven't really messed with at all. And it's been good to learn from these guys because we're seeing certain misses and it just, from what we know and our knowledge base, it didn't make any sense. And then after talking to guys that are experienced shooting here, we're definitely learning why it was, you know, three tenths higher than we normally would shoot. And that's some good knowledge to put in our toolbox for sure. I think the, uh, the public concept from movies for snipers, it's, it's a guy sitting in a, a church bell tower taking pot shots at people. And snipers are actually very, very highly trained, skilled individuals, and they're versed not only in marksmanship, but a lot of other things. So the concept in militaries throughout the world is that snipers operate as teams. They're both equally qualified, but precision long range shooting requires a, a lot of math, requires a lot of special skills. So typically you have one guy who's the shooter or the sniper, you have one guy who's the spotter. When you're shooting at extreme long distances, Sometimes you don't hit the first time. And what the spotter does is he can watch the flight path of that bullet and he can give correction sometimes before the round actually impacts on the target if it looks like it's not gonna be a hit. The spotter also plays a critical role because the biggest environmental Im uh, factor that impacts a sniper's ability to hit a long range target is wind. So the spotter primarily is, is responsible for making corrections and calculations for environmental factors and then telling the shooter uh, what corrections to dial onto his scope and then when to actually send the round. So it, it's really a, a teamwork effort between the two to become an effective unit. The challenge for us is uh, it's been since 2012 since I've been behind a gun and it's been almost 35 years for my partner Scott here. Uh, we both worked together at the uh, Army Schoolhouse and uh, so this is all new to us. This, this uh, sport or science has, has come so far in the last 30 years, it's, it's unbelievable. We're, we're trying to play catch up. Yeah. And you know, we took all Army snipe competition in 1988. And uh, we, at Fort uh, Benning, when we were stationed there at the sniper school, we did challenges, uh, capabilities exercise about once a month and everything. We were used to working with each other. After 30 some odd years, a little bit rusty. But. Yeah, the skills are very perishable. This is a, this is a type of shooting you have to do all the time, and you got to stay stay on it, or or you're going to lose it most definitely. What we would really like to see, and, and what we've been focused on, is marksmanship. We we have not been focused on sniper craft. We've not been uh, focused on uh, gimmicks and and stuff. You know, this is pure marksmanship. And so they're given, for example, on a stand, they're given the azimuth, and and they're and they're they have to locate the target. They you know. You know, using a compass, uh, which uh, the, a lot of them have now found that a compass is much better than a phone in terms of determining your azimuth. You know, they have to engage the target. That you know, they have to call the wind, and and the prime thing is communication. Want to know what's happening at American Rifleman? Follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. We'll be right back. Back at Black Bear Shooting Complex witnessing the first ever Major Jim Land Snipers Cup. And really the terrain features of this environment allow these shooters to showcase their skills of ranges of out to almost 2,000 yards. So the Major Land Sniper Cup is a competition that we designed to honor uh, Major Jim Land who was the founder of the Marine Scout Sniper School. And uh, we have incorporated some aspects of PRS shooting, some aspects of extreme long range shooting into one event. And there'll be short range targets that are engaged with pistols and carbines and long range targets engaged with rifles. Obviously, anytime you're dealing with long range shooting, 
there's another variables and additional layers of difficulty. So it's not only the marksmanship aspect of, you know, putting guys in uncomfortable positions maybe, and then also dealing with the effects of rain. So their predictions for their impacts, um, figuring out the wind at distance. And this particular range, this venue, you know, we're up here on this mountain and the targets are usually across a valley or on another major terrain feature. So you have all that air in between you and the target that you can't really see that well. Now, I think some of these teams have been challenged initially of time. It, you know, it's not that they don't have the skill and ability to do it, it's just they need a little more time to do it, but that's, that's the nature of competitions. Bring it down, 0.5. We're both scout snipers in Victor 3-4 out of 29 Palms. Uh, coincidentally, we're actually roommates too. In my opinion, the most important thing being a sniper team is having camaraderie and being able to get along and successfully um, implement the plan you guys are going to utilize for each stage. I would say one of the most important things that goes into being a sniper team is um, communication and compatibility. So finding people that you can work with every day that keep level heads in stressful situations and the ability to communicate in those situations as well. Hold point, uh, hold, hold right edge. One of the nicest things that, that I've seen as part of this match was the uh, interaction the shooters have been able to have with Major Land and especially the active duty, the young Marine snipers that are here that got to spend some time with him. We have four of the original sniper instructors that went to the Marines for training to open the Army Sniper School at Benning. And we've got four of them here today. So that's that's really cool. What I would advise, you know, a, a, a new shooter is, is come up here, uh, we, will, we will do what we can to help you uh, improve your skills. I think one of the things you'll find with extreme long range shooting uh, is that each competitor is willing to help even their, their competition. I mean, you, you know, we, we'll get people up here who are brand new ELR shooters, for example, and, and the most experienced person will sit down with them, work with their dope and, and work with their gear and stuff. And we're seeing, we're seeing that also here.